All right, guys, welcome back to another M Creator lore. So there was a few things that I ended up having to redo. Uh, the first thing is the charts for all the um, stuff that I researched. Well, I must have deleted it by accident. But uh, while I researched it again for the second time, I did find out some other things that I wasn't totally sure about. Um, as some species do require... Um, don't require like a lot of water uh, or you know not to be submerged or tolerant or something like that the, the, a lot of them do require uh, like rice does require a lot of uh, water itself so I, I looked into a couple different ways that we might be able to implement this system as I was corrected a couple times on in the community about it needing to be um, a water plant so currently we have a cube for our uh, tilled soil. I was thinking about this and I'm going, okay, this probably would be the easiest way to adapt it because if we were to do it with a plant itself, then we have to make a whole bunch of other stuff and it will, probably won't work out that well. So I start, I brought it down two blocks uh, or two pixels just to kind of measure out the um, the thing. I thought maybe this would work, but later on I, did, I noticed that there was some weird stuff happening. Um, mainly because the water level is two pixels down. So we had to go a little bit further than two pixels. We had to actually go down four pixels, but little ahead of myself. Uh, what I ended up doing was I ended up going ahead and saving it to the thing. I ended up clearing out all these because I was wondering if I ended up using an instance and I'm sure hope I did use an instance at this point because um, there, these are a lot of models that wouldn't necessarily need to be in the thing. So I just wanted to make sure that the everything was set up properly and uh, that we could go ahead and update the uh, thing here, the model for the thing. But um, what I ended up doing was just saving the model itself, importing it uh, after deleting it, but I needed to create all these instances again. and. I know that some of these people on the community might already go, why didn't you just like drop it in the models folder? And at the time, I didn't know that you could do that and keep all the inst instances in the model. So um, after what I ended up doing was, after I went ahead and actually set up all the textures and stuff again, I went ahead and uh, set up the, or just imported the model because this is again, a, the fur only two layers down, not the four layers down, which I ended up uh, going with. So uh, there's some pros and cons with uh, actually doing it this way. Uh, obviously the con for this is you have to go down quite a bit of level to actually show water properly. And the, the good part of it is a lot of the mechanics and stuff won't be affected by the plant itself. So um, because the plant is actually above the ground, you have to kind of shift the plant a little bit down, which is a downside, but it won't really make too much of a difference when you're breaking the plant itself. Uh, some pros is it looks really good when you're actually tilling the soil because you have that extra like three pixels. And again, after I realized that it wasn't working, I or after I realized that we had to move the crop down, I noticed that we actually had it two or one pixel down already. So I just moved the entire crop thing down uh, one extra pixel, and this should bring it to the level where the um, crops will be layered. So basically after I did that, I needed to go ahead and just remove the models and old models and basically move everything down two pixels and this should uh, make it so the um, textures and everything are aligned properly when we go ahead and import it into the, uh, the game. So uh, these ones were a lot easier to set up. Um, I didn't go ahead and, well, I went ahead and uh, imported it. It wasn't too hard to uh, set up for all the stages and stuff like that for these ones. Um, Basically, there was only like five or six stages, so it's not too hard for importing. At this point, I still didn't know that you could just replace the model folder or the model in the model folder. So 
it would import. So I ended up setting up all these particular models as well. So we had something to work with uh, that should be on the right height. And again, I had to go back and do all that again because it wasn't even at the right height. So after that, um, I went ahead and just uh, basically imported them to the workspace. And then I could go ahead and uh, set up the instances and stuff like that. So I needed to start with the lowest one and then basically use the names based on the existing ones so we could go ahead and uh, not need to worry about updating all the other uh, model parts for that we already set up for the um, block states and stuff. So that's basically what I did. And then I just needed to add the textures for each one of them. And this didn't take too long, uh, just a couple moments to do. So um, again, uh, the dead stage doesn't actually drop anything. I think that's a really good feature because you, you know, thinking about how crops actually work, it would probably not actually drop anything if you were to harvest it. It would probably just be dead, period. So that's basically what I did. And then in-game, I started playing around with this. I needed to actually get uh, below the crops but I noticed that the hitboxes wasn't actually set up on the right level still, so I would have to go ahead and do that. Now this is the two pixels down from the part there, so I wanted to go ahead and remove the plants that we had on here and basically test with a bucket. And I noticed some weird stuff happening. Now I'm not, I was almost questioning if I should continue to keep this in, because it was an interesting feature, like the way that it was set up. And I think this has to do with the exact same level as the um, the water. And because that happens, it kind of goes down a little bit around the edges. And basically, it looks like the whole field is flooded. And then I'm like, okay, how can I go about using this particular feature? And I wanted to know if it was going to update at a certain height and it looks like it's just at a certain height that it's going to be like that but the problem with this is we don't know really how to test if there is all the sides around and then it would be really hard to actually um, know where a full block of the water would be so like there's all these edge pieces and stuff and then we would have to have so many extra additional testing and stuff like that and it was it would be just really hard to end up doing so i wanted to actually see the full crop field just to see what it would actually look like and i just started placing them all down and some other weird things started happening like i couldn't just like fill the entire um crop field. I'm not sure if this was intended with the game or not, but uh, in the newer part, you were able to entirely fill it with um, like connected, you know, like water buckets and stuff. So this is basically what it would look like. And it's not a bad idea for the textures along the edge, but sadly, we won't be able to do that with water logging unless we uh, make our own liquids and mechanics and stuff like that. And I don't think that will be really possible to do with um there's already a lot of model states for the tilled farmland so we would have to put it onto that not the crop and it would just be a nightmare to actually add support for so what i ended up going ahead and doing was um just lowering the model down additional two pixels i needed to check the game just to make sure that it was exactly on this level so i just went over to the water there and took a quick look later on but uh in indeed it is on two pixels down so we would have to go at least three pixels or four so i kept it even and i went ahead with four so basically at this point i um created a new model or basically checking the model folder and I noticed that all the instances have their own file which is really good in the model folder uh, for your workspace uh, so I wanted to basically just check the config file for the model itself and it looks like it's the exact same thing that we import from uh, Blockbench so what we can do is we can actually go ahead and go to Blockbench adjust our model so we have our texture uh, or our 
thing a little bit lower. So we'll drop this down two extra pixels and we'll worry about the texturing and everything later. I know this is going to need some retexturing and stuff. Uh, that's not a huge issue at the moment. But once we have everything moved down, then what we can do is we can just export this particular model and then we'll go ahead and we'll, well, we'll save the model first and then we'll export it and we'll save it, uh, replace it with that. We'll delete that old model and then we'll replace it. And then we'll just drop that model with the same name into the workspace and that should be able to uh, keep the instances and everything like that, which means we only really need to update the instances one, one time. So after doing that, I needed to do that same th process with the uh, crops themselves. And I was just basically testing the crops, uh, basically moving the crops over and the other particular ones. So I basically needed to do this for the crops. I needed to do it for the, um, the crop plane. And then I needed to do this for the um, other things. So once I did that, I could basically reboot M Creator because I didn't know if it would uh, keep it in memory. So I basically rebooted M Creator and then I regenerated the code, let it uh, basically render its thing out. And once it's rendered, uh, I basically just click build uh, after just to make sure that everything was set up. And uh, sure enough, it looks like everything kept its uh, models and stuff like that, the model instances. So it should be able to do that. And then I just needed to go in and update the hitbox. So I did this for the crops as well. Like I said, I needed to do this for the crops. I needed to move everything down four pixels or I guess additional two pixels. So it was four pixels down just so it was on the crops themselves and not floating in the air. And generally you want to keep within the boundary of the box uh, for the uh, the thing, but uh, unfortunately we're not able to do that with the custom tilled soil. So we had to move everything down. Like for this one, it shouldn't be too huge of an issue because it's only four blocks down. It might even help with the hitbox of the uh, some of the features, but we'll see how it turns out. I'm not sure how it will all function and stuff like that. But uh, basically I exported it and then I needed to import the models. I'm not sure where I saved the models. I think I put it in the other folder that we were working in. So I just moved them over into this one and then I could basically import it into mCreator using the models folder. So I basically deleted both of these and just dragged those over and there we go, we got it all set up. So I basically, one of the features of doing this is you can kind of see the tilled soil uh, go down four pixels when you're harvesting it. And this is a really neat little addition. I mean, I wish Minecraft did this because it would look a lot more realistic. Uh, well, not so much realistic, but it is more satisfying like overall because you see the change when you're actually hoeing it. Um, the problem with uh, paths and other things when you're actually harvesting is that you don't see the model actually change too much. So basically what I was doing was I was just filling this up and then I wanted to see uh, how it would basically do. And as you can see, it kind of fill, auto fills the entire field on its own. So I don't know why the other one didn't do that, but this one actually does. So maybe it's just the particular height that it has to deal with and then it will automatically uh, fill it. So I wanted to go ahead and place all the seeds just to make sure that everything looked proper. And I'm not sure if the seeds actually need to be underwater when you plant them. I didn't find anything really online about that uh, when I was searching, although I didn't really make specific searches for that uh, query. But um, we're just going to wing it and say that it's going to be planted underwater because that would be a lot more easier for mechanics. And then we'll sleep a couple times and we'll see how it all works. And then I realized I didn't even have a bed anymore. So <laughs> I built this house and then it's like, I don't have a bed. So I ended up just grabbing a uh, red one, placing it down. So we actually had something to sleep on. And then we could go ahead and check to see how everything worked out for the first stage. And I did this a uh, number of times, not just for this stage, just to see how everything works and this would work because the pixels are still out of the water um, generally you don't want the plant waterlogged because if the water if the plant is waterlogged like completely waterlogged 
uh, it can't get the gases or the um, sunlight, which actually kills the plant. Uh, fun little fact for rice sp specifically, it needs to be outside of the water in order to actually grow properly. So with that, the pixels just out of the water, I would say that's more reasonable. Uh, we might even expand the pixel just a couple more just to make it a little bit more um, realistic. But um, outside of that, uh, there's a few extra stages, so I'm going to set it tonight. And I'll just keep doing that until we get throughout uh, the stages, and then we can kind of see what every stage kind of looks like. So we'll sleep. I really like that bed mechanic that we set up in a couple episodes ago. So this is the other one. This looks really good, uh, the way that it's set up. Um, it's uh, actually very realistic with the amount of the the spacing between the plant. We might actually shrink the plant a little bit more so it's uh, more realistic. Uh, because I noticed that the plant is pretty wide when it's grown, fully grown and stuff. So like with this one, you can kind of see that it's, well, I guess it's still pretty um, situated in the center. It's just a little bit more fuller, that's all. So maybe maybe we'll just leave it. All right, so this one, and then we'll just harvest this. And uh, I, I do wonder if we get all the uh, crops themselves, like how many seeds we get from it. Well, which are also rice, so we'll see how many uh, rice things we get from this. And then we can go ahead and... It does make it a little bit harder to harvest because it is in water and you do kind of walk around slowly in it. But um, yeah, it just is. It's not like we won't be able to collect it. There might be actually some other alternative methods of clearing this out. We might start thinking about water farming, uh, making it so we can turn on and off uh, the like a water thing and have it push around on the field. That might be an option as well. So I wanted to go ahead and set this up for the next thing. But anyhow, that's pretty much all that I, I have for today. We got a little bit more realistic mechanics set up. And uh, we'll definitely work on uh, some more stuff in the near future for the rice plant. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Peace out.